The COVID-19 crisis has been called the first truly uh, global event in the history of humankind. Um, and at the same time, we see significant differences in how countries are coping with it. So in the context of the pandemic, it's a health crisis. But actually, in order to protect our health, we had to close down the economy. So a health crisis then led to an economic crisis. But that economic crisis itself will lead to future worse health. Going into the pandemic, one of the things I've found lacking is the uh, coordination between different fields of expertise. So in particular, I think there has been uh, missed opportunities for the Treasury and SAGE to coordinate policies. Let's start with what we don't need to do. We don't need to raise taxes to pay for the pandemic. The cost of the pandemic are a short-term, major cost, but they're not something we should be worrying about trying to pay back right away. What we have had a need to do for some time is to raise taxes to pay for all the other things that we have been needing for a while. So one thing that people have asked about is, will working from home lead to the death of the city? Will people no longer want to travel into the office um, because they're equally productive working at home as they would be among their colleagues? And I personally think the answer to that is no. What we saw during lockdown is that, yes, some people are equally productive at home, as in the office, possibly even more productive. But I think we need to think beyond the short term and think about the long term. Yeah, so look, I mean, not only do we have this environmental responsibility to, you know, to, to prevent um, catastrophic climate change and the risks associated with that, but we have this wonderful opportunity to generate a not just a cleaner, quieter uh, and more environmentally sustainable world, but actually a more uh, efficient, innovative and productive world. One of the problems that we see in, in the UK is that we have full employment, but we, we don't have sufficiently high paid, high productive jobs all around the country. They're mostly centred in London and the South East. These are the jobs that reflect internationally competitive firms at the frontier. It's those firms at the frontier that are providing stable jobs and careers for those people who are lucky enough to have them. So since the start of the COVID pandemic, we've seen British trade volumes have fallen precipitously. And the question on everyone's mind is, are the long-term impacts of COVID going to be stronger? Long-term impacts of Brexit going to be more significant? If you look at work, those who didn't go to university normally get their training and their human capital, we would say, through work experience and vocational training at work, none of which have happened. There hasn't been any work experience and training at work, there's been no workplace to get trained in. Apprenticeships have really dropped during this period. So again, there's a huge loss. And although we may be seeing a bounce back in employment, have we really got a bounce back in the type of skills and that that these people have? The idea of the festival this year is to bring together, uh, to meld together and mix together leading academics who are experts in their field with people who have real life on the ground experience. So to give you an example of that, we started off talking about the nexus of macroeconomics and health, clearly something that's defined all of our lives for the past couple of years. And on that panel, we had the kind of leading um, academic econo economists who are working on that. Um, and, but brought those together with an NHS doctor who had literally just finished a shift uh, in a COVID ward. Oh, it's been fantastic. We have trained our audiences very well. They ask brilliant questions. The panellists are fantastic. And um, I learn something every time. It's amazing to get this overview of all of the key issues of the day. Also, I like the fact that this event has a reasonable amount of interdisciplinary uh, nature to it insofar as it's economics, but it's economics in relation to social, environmental um, and, you know, community type stuff, not, not strictly theoretical and kind of, you know, mathematical, statistical based economics. It's actual real world, real life economics as affected by people. What I like most is the intersectionality. The problem with most of our curriculum is that we, we forget that we're studying humans, right? Economics is after all the study of human beings. So when you bring in health experts and gender experts, you sort of give to economics again its, um, its intersectionality, which is what it should originally be based on. 
At this conference, I'm learning uh, a lot about new correlations which I didn't know existed. So, like for example, we talked about mental health and recession, how there's a bidirectional relationship between the two, and it's really interesting to see new perspectives from people from all walks of life. And I'm glad that I'm at this conference.